what we see here is a situation where uh, a fluid in a container is under pressure P, whether from uh, the gravitational effect on the fluid or from some hydraulic pressure or some combination thereof. Uh, there is a pressure P and there's a hole in the side of the container. And we have a plug of water being forced out of the hole. Now presumably uh, there's a stream of water being forced out of the hole, but we're only interested in this little plug that's just part of the stream, this little part of the stream here. This part of the stream will give a length L, and it'll have a cross-sectional area which we'll denote by A, which is the area of the hole. What we want to do is we want to determine how fast this plug of water has to be exiting the hole. And incidentally, this doesn't have to be water. What we're doing here would correspond or would work for any fluid. Uh, now, to, to determine the velocity of this fluid, we think as follows. Okay, the pressure exerts a force over the cross-sectional area. So this plug is being pushed out by a force that's the pressure acting on this area. And that force acts through distance L as the plug is pushed out. The plug goes from inside to out under pressure P. So under the force P times A and so forth. Now let's see how that works out. We see that the pressure P exerts a force F equal to P times A, pressure times area, as the length L exits the container. And therefore, the pressure P does work it's force times distance. Okay? Now, the distance is L, the force is F, F is equal to P times A, so the work done is P times A times L. Force is P times A, distance is L. And it just became clear to me that you hadn't been able to see that, so let me explain it again uh, so you can see down here. We're simply saying again, that the force is exerted as length L exits. So the force is exerted through length L. So the work is force times distance, and the force is P times A. So we get P times A times L. We then know the change in the kinetic energy of the plug. Now, in order to find the velocity, we know the change in its kinetic energy. Presumably, the water inside here isn't moving, so the change in kinetic energy is the kinetic energy that the plug has when it leaves. So that if we can find the mass of this plug, we can find its velocity from the kinetic energy. Uh, let me comment that the pressure's P in here. We're assuming that the pressure outside is zero, so that the net force is just equal to the pressure times the area. If there is a pressure out here pushing in, then we'd have to use the difference of pressures. And actually, I'm taking a little bit of liberty here. Uh, presumably, if the outside pressure is zero, that means that we're shooting the water out into a vacuum, which is going to cause a very quick evaporation of the water. Uh, we're not really interested in that, so what we can really think is the gauge pressure. The pressure in here, the gauge is reading uh, some pressure in the fluid. Outside, the gauge is reading zero, as most gauges do at atmospheric pressure. So we do have atmospheric pressure out here, and P is the pressure over and above atmospheric, the gauge pressure. Uh, that's valid as long as we're looking at pressure differences. If we want absolute pressure, then we've got to include the atmospheric pressure. Uh, okay. Now, again, we know the kinetic energy of this plug. Let's find the mass. Well, the mass of the fluid in the plug is just density of the fluid times the volume. Uh, for water, that density is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. This is the Greek letter rho. Uh, and this funny-looking V here is a capital V. We write it this way to distinguish it from a lowercase v, which often represents velocity. Since we're talking about volume and velocity in the same problem, we'd better be careful about that. Okay, so uh, rho times v is going to be the mass, density, kilograms per cubic meter times volume in cubic meters. And the volume is just what? This is a 
cylindrical plug, cross-sectional area A, length L, so its, air, its volume is area times length. So the mass of the fluid is rho V, which is rho times A times L. So now what we see is that we have a mass, rho times A times L, which gains kinetic energy, P times A times L. Now rho looks a little like P, but not that much. Rho's rounded off. P is a capital. Uh, if this mass gains this kinetic energy, well, one-half mv squared is then P times A times L, which implies that V squared, if we uh, multiply by 2 and divide by m, gives us 2PAL over m. And the mass is rho AL, so we have 2PAL over rho AL which means that the velocity squared comes out to be two times the pressure over the density rho. Now, it might be a little hard to distinguish capital P pressure from little p rho, um, but this is pressure, this is rho. Now, if we rearrange this and just solve for the pressure, we see that the pressure is one-half rho v squared. Okay? And that's going to be important when we look at Bernoulli's equation.